There once lived in Babylonia two lovers named Pyramus and Thisbe, who were separated by a strange misfortune, for they lived in connected houses, and although their parents had forbidden them to marry, these two had found a means of talking to each other through a crack in the wall. Here, again and again, Pyramus on his side of the wall and Thisbe on hers, they would meet to tell each other all that had happened during the day and to complain of their cruel parents. Eventually, they decided that they could endure it no longer and they would leave their homes and be married no matter what. They planned to meet on a certain evening by a mulberry tree near the tomb of King Ninos outside the city gates. Once safely met, they were resolved to elope together. You envious barrier, why get in our way? Would it be too much to ask you to open wide for an embrace or even permit us room to kiss in? Still, we are grateful. We owe you something. We admit, at least, you let us talk together. I am so thankful that we can see each other through this wall. What are you doing here? In mother. the middle of the night? Nothing, mother. I was just talking to myself. Do you think that I believe you? Mother, I'm just praying. No. Mother, please. So far, all went well. At the appointed time, Sisby heavily veiled to disguise herself, managed to escape from home unnoticed. And after a secret journey through the streets of Babylon, she came to a garden of mulberry tree near the tomb of Ninos. The place Pyramus. was deserted, and Pyramus, once there, she took off oh, the veil Pyramus. from her face to see if Pyramus awaited anywhere among the shadows. She heard the sound of footsteps and turned to see not Pyramus, but a creature and welcome to a near rendezvous, none other than a lioness crouching to drink from a pond nearby. Without a cry, Bisley fled, dropping her veil as she ran. She found a hiding place among the rocks at some distance, and there she waited, not knowing what else to do. The lioness, having quenched her thirst from some violent meal, turned from the spring and coming upon the veil, sniffed at it carelessly, tore and tossed it with her bloody jaws as she would have done with Thisbe herself, then drop the plaything and walk away to the forest once more. One night, we'll kill two lovers, and one of them, most surely, deserve a longer life. It is all my fault. I am the murderer. Poor girl, I told you to come here in the night to all this terror and was not here before you to protect you. His blood ran over the roots. During these very moments, Sisby, hearing no sound and little reassured, had left from her hiding place and came to the edge of the forest. She found Pyramus there. According to his promise, his own sword was in his heart, the empty shaft by his side, and his hand, he still held her veil. Thisbe saw these things as if she were in a dream, and suddenly the truth awoke her. She saw the tragic misfortune of all, and when the dying Pyramus opened his eyes and fixed them upon her, her heart broke. With the same sword, she stopped herself, and the lovers died together. them after a day of an exhausting search and 
they were buried together in the same tomb. But the berries of the mulberry tree turned red that day, and red they have remained ever since.